how do I start a cut? How do I start a cut? Where do I start? Here's the progress that I have made so far in the first five weeks. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Carissa if you're new here and I make all things wellness, health, lifestyle with a few joints here and there. <laughs> Today's video is actually really exciting because I have written down here all of the things you need to know to go on your first ever cut. Today marks the sixth week of being on my cut. Here's the progress that I have made so far in the first five weeks. And just like that, it's actually been nine weeks of the cut at this point. Holy shit, it took me like three and a half weeks to put this video up. Um, anxiety! But anyway, here is what the progress is looking like on week nine. Three weeks left to go. I started at 184 pounds and today I weighed in at 165. I personally have always been someone who has struggled with being consistent or disciplined um, with anything in my life, to be honest. I have severe ADHD. I also have been diagnosed with bipolar two disorder, even though I don't think that that's actually true. I personally think they're lying about that one. <laughs> Anxiety, depression, and PTSD. So I have always kind of struggled in life in general. So the fact that I have been consistent with not with the gym for almost a year and I've been consistent with this cut for six weeks straight it's very baffling to me and it's very like I can't believe that I'm here but now that I am here I totally can believe it because there are ways to make it sustainable and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today so specifically this video is about how to go on your first cut it's a guide for my girlies trying to go on a cut but in a sustainable way, in a way where you're not gonna feel hungry and in a way that you're not gonna feel like a piece of shit when you see the scale move up and down, because it will. And surprise, um, I got a puppy. She just turned seven months this week. We've had her for about a month. Baby, you can chill, you can chill. So I may have to have her on my lap here and there because if I don't watch her at all times, shit gets crazy, okay? So I wrote down here on my laptop a few different notes of different things that I wanted to talk about and how I wanted to break this video down. So please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. I am trying my best to upload every Wednesday. Right now it's kind of looking like every other Wednesday, but after the holiday, I'm gonna try to be really consistent with posting on here. It's just so much easier to do some long form content with all the questions that you guys ask me on my Instagram and my TikTok. So other than that, let's just get right into the video, baby. So the first thing I wanna answer is the obvious. What the fuck is a cut? What is it? What is it? So a cut is when you are trying to lose fat while also trying to preserve as much muscle as possible. So basically I am on a program, I'm working with a personal trainer twice a week, but you do not need to have a personal trainer to be able to do this. It's just something that I wanted to invest in because I'm specifically trying to learn Olympic weightlifting and I just feel like that's something I absolutely could never be able to teach myself. So having a trainer has really helped me in that, in that aspect. And so with help from him, I've been able to kind of stay on track while also learning new movements getting stronger. I am losing fat, keeping the muscle that I have, and I'm still progressively overloading. And progressive overload is basically when you're going up in weight every week or you're going up in reps. You're basically just doing more than you did the week before, and that's how you make growth. Benefits of a cut can be that you lose fat, um, and it's very data-based, so I am weighing myself every day. Um, mind you, you don't have to weigh yourself every day. This is just something that I'm doing because I have no emotional attachment to the scale. And that's something that I'll talk about a little bit later. It's also very important to know that if you are starting a cut, it is temporary. You don't wanna go over 12 weeks of doing a cut. And I'm doing 12 weeks personally, but that's because right now the goal is to make it to 12 weeks. But remember, I'm only on week six. If I get to week eight and I'm finding that I'm not able to push as much in the gym, or I'm finding that I'm feeling starving, I'm feeling irritable, if things just start to feel off, then I'll cut it from there. <laughs> That's funny. You just really need to be in tune with your body and you need to know when enough is enough. And for me right now, I'm cruising. It seems very sustainable for me. It hasn't been that bad, um, but yeah, but everybody's gonna be different. So you have to be very, very in touch with yourself, in touch with your body, in touch with what you're doing in order to make the progress at all when it comes to making it sustainable because that is definitely the number one goal for me. I'm not gonna do anything that's going to make me hate my life. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna make me feel starving. Because the fact is, if fitness is not fun, 
I'm not going to do it. So, so let's talk about setting goals. That's obviously the first thing that you need to do before you go on your cut. What is the progress that you are trying to make? And what are your goals and specifically with your training and with what you're eating? Setting realistic and achievable goals is crucial when it comes to starting a cut. So things that I think about when I'm trying to make my own goals, what is the fitness level that I'm at right now? We don't wanna shoot too far because if it's too hard, you're not gonna do it, baby. And if you struggled with disordered eating or any eating disorders, things like that, please, please, please. First of all, baby, if you're struggling with those things, I don't know that a cut is going to be best for you, but if you're still trying to do it, I would recommend consulting with a healthcare professional or maybe a registered dietitian, somebody that can help aid you because it can sometimes be a touchy subject for some people. Setting realistic goals allows you to focus on more gradual changes and it's gonna help you establish those healthy habits. Going at it from this approach is really going to help you prevent feelings of deprivation or frustration that can arise from setting any overly ambitious ambitious goals. The most important thing to understand about the cut is that it's not just about the number moving on the scale. It's about making progress in the gym as well, along with improving your well-being. So my biggest question is like, how do I start a cut? How do I start a cut? Where do I start? I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. I personally love the app Macro Factor. I love it 10 times more than MyFitnessPal. If you have MyFitnessPal, what the fuck is up, girl? What the fuck is up? Because MyFitnessPal will put your calories like at 1,200. And I'm gonna let you know, I don't care how much you weigh. I don't care how much you're doing. And I don't care about how much you're not doing. 1,200 calories is not what you should be consuming, especially if you are on your first cut. So I really, really, really enjoyed the app Macro Factor. Honestly, at this point, they should sponsor me. That's how much I fucking talk about this app. I love it. There's a section for you to put in recipes so that you can keep track of different things that you've made. There's a section for you to add things quickly if you're in a rush. It saves all of your past foods that you've used. And my favorite part about Macro Factor is that it tailors to whatever goals you have. It asks you so many specific questions. I pay for the paid version, but I think that it's what, like $10 a month. And it will basically ask you how much weight you want to lose within a certain amount of time. And a lot of the time, something that the app has you do is track the first week of two, week or two of you eating just what you normally eat so that it can get your maintenance calories to be able to then put you on a sustainable cut. So I personally chose one and a half pounds a week. That was my goal. And I averaged about two a week. You don't want to lose more than two pounds a week. That's when things can start to get a little bit unhealthy and you can notice a lot of changes in your overall health. So it's definitely something that you're going to have to be patient for, which is why I made it my goal to make it sustainable. And I knew that if I was going to feel like I was starving or feel like I'm really hungry during this cut, that I, it was not going to work for me. So that was definitely the most important part. And so in order to do that, I had to focus on high volume low calorie foods. So a lot of vegetables, a lot of meat. And so like a way that my personal trainer kind of explained it to me that really helped me is that in like a basic meal that we have, we've got like this much protein, this much carbs and this much vegetable, right? But maybe on a cut, it's gonna be like this much vegetable, this much protein and this much carb. And so that kind of made me realize that maybe I don't need to stop eating the things that I do eat, but maybe I need to kind of have smaller portions or switch things out where maybe I'm having more meat than I am in than I am carbs if I'm making like spaghetti and meatballs. And when setting your achievable goals and you're considering the desired amount of like weight loss that you want to get, in return from this cut. It's just so important to know to be extremely patient and understand that sustainable progress is going to take time. That's why I said that I'm trying to do my cut for 12 weeks versus eight or six because it's just not that aggressive. And in addition to your weight loss goals, you need to make non-weight loss goals. This can include improvements with your strength, endurance, or overall fitness level. Non-scale goals really helped provide me a broader perspective of progress and it's helped maintain my motivation when the scale starts to go up or doesn't move at all, which is going to happen very frequently. Like, let me just put that out there. If you are on a cut and you're weighing yourself specifically every day, like I am, there are times that I wake up and I'm two pounds heavier. There's times that I wake up and I'm two pounds lighter. Like 
that's why it's so important to understand that weighing yourself is simply just data because we are taking all of these numbers and we're like averaging it out because your weight is going to fluctuate every day. And as soon as you stop having that emotional attachment to the scale and to a stupid fucking number, that is one of a million other ways to realize of how healthy you are, right? Um, that's when you're going to really be able to stay consistent with the cut without having like those toxic that toxic mindset. Because remember, the journey of being on a cut is awesome, but we still want the bigger goal in mind. And the bigger goal in mind is always our overall health moving forward. It's important to listen to your body, to make adjustments when things are not working. Do not follow what everybody else is doing because you need to find what works for you. You, We are all unique, we are all different. And as soon as you start trying to follow what other people are doing, you're gonna find it 10 times harder, I swear. Stay committed, stay focused, and enjoy the process along the way. Those are the three things you need to do. Now, when it comes to a cut, I feel like a lot of people like to talk about how you have to up your cardio, and that was one of the reasons that I didn't want to do a cut. I fucking hate cardio, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I hate that shit, it's really boring, and it's not my cup of tea, okay? Um, but there are other ways to up your cardio without doing cardio. And what I mean by that is like, you don't have to be running on a treadmill. You don't have to do the Stairmaster ever after every workout. I just worked on increasing my step amount. I had a goal, if I'm being honest, I work from home. So I averaged about five to 6,000 steps a day. So I made a goal to make 10,000 steps every day. This isn't, um, and this is only to give me some more steps. Because the thing is, if you need to eat more, you can move more. So if you're feeling really hungry on your cut, you don't necessarily have to go down in calories, you can go up in the amount of movement that you're doing. It's still going to give you the same outcome. So I really wanted to focus on getting more steps in along with working on progressive overload so that I can have some good fucking food and not feel like I'm starving myself. Something else that I have that has helped me so much is one of those under the desk walkers. Even if you don't work from home, I've seen many girls that will like come home from work and after they eat dinner, they'll walk on this in front of the TV. Like, have you heard, have you guys heard of like that cozy cardio thing where girls will use the walking pads downstairs just to watch TV. You don't have to go fast. You don't need to be sweating. You just need to get those extra steps in. I have found that that specifically has probably helped me the most in the cut, just trying to make sure that I'm getting enough steps in. And something else that's really cool about Macro Factor is that when it evaluates your cut and once you go through a week or two of being on your cut, it will then tailor your calories and your macros to how well you're doing. So if they think that you're not eating enough, they're gonna add calories for you, but still keep you in your deficit. Or if you're overeating a little bit, it will do the opposite. So I just really, really, really love the approach that Macro Factor takes. I have found that this cut has been a breeze simply because of that app. Why aren't you sponsoring me yet, Macro Factor? What the fuck? So let's talk about monitoring your progress. This, this is so freaking important. I need y'all to listen to me right now. If you are only using the scale to track your progress, I'm gonna need you to take a fucking step back, okay? I'm gonna need you to put your little stinky booty down and I'm gonna need you to reevaluate your life because what's going on here, that's how you create that toxic relationship with the scale, motherfucker. That's exactly how you do that, by just focusing on the number, okay? So I need you to take progress photos. You don't need to take those bitches every day. Just take them once a week, once a fucking week. Photos are where I see the biggest difference. I'm going to be so honest with you right now. I'm going to play this video. I'm going to play this video for you. But before I play this video, I need you to understand that this was a week before my period. And I am in a beautiful headspace three weeks out of every single month. But then the week before my period comes and my toxic thoughts... <laughs> They just come running in, baby. So it's a temporary thing. It only happens once a month. And usually right after, I'm like, oh, I feel better. Why was I being so toxic? But I'm gonna play this video for you to kind of show you a moment that I kind of had a little bit of toxic behavior with myself. And I was really focused on the physique and what I looked like and the weight. Um, so just give it a watch. Will I look different is my question after the end of 12 weeks. Oh my God, you look different already. What are you talking about? I don't see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, like, we don't have to look at some pictures because you already look different. You're down like 10 fucking pounds, aren't you? I know, but I just don't like, I'm you like, where? Different. I just want to look like I go to the gym, you know what I mean? Like, I want to walk somewhere and they'd be like, yeah, she goes to the gym. I mean, I, you know? I, would, I, would, I would feel like we're already there. Truly, <laughs> me. It's cringy when there's people in here. Like, I don't bring a tripod. No, you won't see me doing that. I'm too scared. Because I just feel like I'm not like, a, like, 
like a muscle mommy yet, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm just, I'm a little nervy. Yeah, I'm going to gym regardless of how much weight you're lifting. And you might have talked about lifting some serious heavy weight in here. Like, I, I, like, I literally just finished telling one of my clients today about you and how you did a fucking 130 front squat the first time you ever did it. Like, you're fucking strong. You, you are a muscle mom. Um, as you can see, like, I'm not perfect. And there are definitely times where I'm a little bit too worried about the physique. But in this moment, I realized that I had only taken a picture on the first week of my cut and then progress photos on the fourth, fifth week of my cut. And that's when I realized like, oh my God, I need, I need to be doing this at least once a week because I feel like you can see so much more progress in photos than you can with your weight. I'll be honest, I'm like what, 14, 15 pounds down now and sometimes it's really hard to notice the difference. Like I start to question like, is my scale broken? Like it happens, it happens. But since I've started taking progress photos, all that toxic shit is out the door because as soon as I look at this picture, the progress doesn't lie, baby. The progress does not lie. But our little brains, our little brains, they like to fucking lie, especially when it comes to a number on the scale that for some reason, all of us women just care about so fucking much. So I would really recommend for you guys to take progress photos once a week, along with tracking your weight. And if you watch all of my um, get ready with me videos or my morning vlogs, set it and forget it, baby. Set it and forget it. And honestly, the person who kind of put this in my head was my trainer, if I'm being completely honest. He's a boss ass bitch. He's fucking amazing. And he basically told me, I want you to write in a journal and a spreadsheet, whatever, write down your number in the morning. As soon as you wake up, write down what you weigh and fucking shut the fucking book and move on with your day. Don't think about it. Don't look at it again. You move the fuck on. And so when he said that, I was like, okay, I just need to set it and forget it. It reminded me of that commercial from the nineties, right? And ever since I started to have that approach, it has just been so much easier. Take your weight, write it down, close that fucking book and forget about it, baby. Forget about it. <laughs> And then this is when we want to come back to those non-scale victories. I love filming my Olympic weightlifting movements because when I have progress to look back on like this, this was my first hand clean that I've ever done versus the one that I did the other day. What the fuck? That's literally August versus November. And so when I'm able to take those wins, it's like, holy shit, even if the scale hasn't moved this week or the scale has gone up or whatever, anything I'm still making progress in the gym, baby. I'm progressively overloading. My hand cleans are getting sexy. So just focusing on the non-scale victories, it definitely is one of the most important things that you need to do if you're trying to go on a cut and be sustainable about it. Now let's talk about staying motivated, okay? When it comes to staying motivated, I feel like it's the hardest part for all of us, right? There's some days that I'm feeling super motivated and there's some days where I'm like, I just wanna eat a house. I'm not even that hungry, but I just want to eat a house. It happens. It's normal. And that's why I honestly love my personal trainer because I feel like it's that sense of accountability. You know, it's that sense of, I don't want to let somebody else down. That's definitely something that helps motivate me. But looking back on my progress is the biggest motivator when it comes to staying motivated. Seeing how much progress I made just makes me, um, what's the word? Like, it makes me crave more in a way. It makes me want to go harder because I'm like, wow, if I've made this much progress from this amount of time to this amount of time, imagine if I keep going. Um, Y'all know that Naruto is my number one motivator. I fucking love that show. I feel like there are so many life lessons in it and I take a lot of those practices from Naruto and I will take that shit in the gym with me. And it may sound cringy, but it works. You gotta find what fuels your flame, I guess. And and um, run with it from there. I also have to really prior prioritize self-care practices so that I don't burn out. I need to make sure that the gym is not my entire life. Planning out these meals, it's not my entire life. We all know what my number one hobby is. Snoop Dogg isn't quitting, by the way. 
Anyway, finding a different hobby, finding other things to do. I really enjoy reading. That's a really big self-care act for me. I go and watch the sunset every night. It's little things that just kind of fill my cup and make me feel good. And if I weren't doing, and if I wasn't doing those things, I wouldn't be able to stay on this cut and be happy. <laughs> so making sure that you're prioritizing self-care is going to be so fucking important. The last part that I wanted to talk about was nutrition. I know that so many people struggle with this and that's why I want to give it to you straight. First of all, I want to tell you something. In the first eight months of my fitness journey, I went from looking like this to looking like this. I simply focused on showing up and being 1% better every day. That's all I did. I didn't focus on my nutrition. I wasn't on a cut. I wasn't trying to lose weight. I was just focused on being consistent and because, think about this, if you don't work out, okay? You don't work out at all and you start to slowly but surely become consistent with that, you're going to make progress anyway, baby. You don't have to be in some huge deficit because your body is already used to eating what it eats and not moving. So when you're still eating whatever you eat and then you start to move, that's already gonna put you in a deficit, baby. So that's why they talk about those newbie gains. It's super easy. It's way easier for me to make progress than it is my personal trainer because he's been doing this for 10 years and I've been doing it for one. So use that to your advantage. I personally think that if you are not consistent in the gym already, you shouldn't go on a cut. You need to focus on being consistent and disciplined and showing up on the days that you say you're going to. And then once you've done that for about like six months, then start your cut. And that is the most sustainable way to do it. I truly feel like I'm entering this cut in such a positive mindset simply because I just spent the first eight months focusing on being consistent, learning new movements, getting my form right. All of those things are so overwhelming if you're trying to learn all of that and go on a cut and watch what you're eating, track what you're eating. That's too fucking much. I don't want you doing too much. If you're trying to do too much, then you need to change your end goal because if you want it enough, you will be patient. So I just want to put that out there. Um, but if you are tracking things that I have found to be very, very, very helpful when it comes to um, being on a cut, because let's be honest, if we are trying to lose as much fat as possible, but also retain the muscle that we do have, we're going to have to eat really high protein. Like we're going to have to eat really high protein. So protein is my number one thing that I, that I focus on. Um, obviously I stay within my calories for this cut, but even before the cut protein was the only thing that I focused on. I basically ate what I want, but just made sure that all the shit that I was eating was pretty high protein and it worked out for me. For this cut, I have to get, I think it's like 150 grams of protein a day. And that seems to work with me. It used to be a little bit higher, but because my weight is a little bit lower, now I don't have to consume as much, but I really found that that helped me a lot. Honestly, making sure that every single one of my meals for the day were very high protein. I usually eat about three meals a day and then I'll have one or two snacks and I'm able to fit all of my calories in that. And everyone's calories are going to be different. I'm not going to tell you what my calories are. I'm not going to tell you what all of my macros are because every body is different. Go on the Macro Factor app, fill out all of the shit and figure out what is good for you. A lot of the times, um, some of the girls that I have talked to who have tried Macro Factor, a lot of the times, the first week, they're just having you like eat more calories than you even think that you should be. I also wanted to show you guys some high protein, low calorie options, just things that help me every single day on my cut. Eggs are something that I consume every single day. There's about six, pro six grams of protein in one egg and they're pretty low calorie and very good for you. Fun fact, I eat bacon every day and I've still been able to lose weight. Um, I do not eat turkey bacon. I tried it for like a week and I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? So I fit regular bacon into my macros and it worked out fine. Um, bacon is really high in protein, so that helps me. And something that I always do with my eggs, I don't prefer them fried. I always have them scrambled because I add in cottage cheese. Now listen here, brother, before you fucking say, bitch, cottage cheese is absolutely disgusting. Listen, listen, Linda. My husband, he fucking hates he hates cottage cheese. But I decided to surprise him one day. I said, hey, I'm gonna make you some eggs, baby. Let me make you some breakfast. He was like, sure. I put a whole one fourth cup of cottage cheese mixed with those eggs. I scrambled that shit up real good. Use that instead of milk. Pour that shit on there, scramble those eggs up. He didn't even notice. He said, how the fuck did you make these eggs? They were so good, they're so fluffy. It's cottage cheese, motherfucker. Can you believe it? It's insane, it's absolutely fucking insane. So. 
If you're not putting cottage cheese in your eggs, what the fuck are you doing? Seriously, even if you don't like cottage cheese, give it a swirl. Um, and I promise you don't have to blend it up. Like you won't feel the consistency. You won't even taste the cottage cheese. I'm telling you. I have usually one protein bar a day. I'm gonna be honest, protein bars aren't my favorite, but the Bear Bells and the Power Crunch bars, those are two phenomenal brands. They taste like chocolate bars and they help me get in some extra protein for the day. And they're relatively low calorie. I'd say they're in like the 200s. The another thing that has really helped me is meal prepping. I find that there has not been a week that goes by. If I skip my meal prep, I will not get enough calories in for the day. And that's because I'm having these high volume, low calorie meals. So realistically, like I'm full girl, I'm full. So I can skip lunch sometimes, especially when I'm getting too busy and I'm like kind of doing my own thing. If I do not meal prep, I'm not eating enough and I'm specifically not getting enough protein. Um, I do have a few meal prepping and recipes, high protein, low calorie recipes recipes on my Instagram and my TikTok. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of those, we can definitely do that. And I can also do a meal prepping video here on YouTube. I feel like it would be so much easier to curate that video on YouTube than it is on my reels because I have to kind of split them up. So if that's something that you're interested in, just let me know and I can work on that as well. Greek yogurt is another thing that I fucking use all the time. At first, I started to get a plain Greek yogurt and a like flavored Greek yogurt. I don't do that shit anymore. I just get the plain Greek yogurt. And if I want sweet Greek yogurt, I'll mix some motherfucking protein powder in there, baby. If you've checked out my protein munchies uh, desserts that I've put on my Instagram, I think two of them involve Greek yogurt and protein powder. It's just such a good fucking mix if you get a good protein powder. It craves my sweet tooth. It's really freaking high in protein and it's delicious. Another thing that I use plain Greek yogurt for is making homemade pizzas. They are absolutely fucking phenomenal and they're low calorie and they make you feel like you're having a cheat meal. Low key, I have them about two to three times a week if I'm being honest. Um, and then the third thing that I love to use Greek yogurt for is dip. So I am a very big, specifically for the pizza. Let's talk about the pizza as an example. I am a fucking ranch girly when it comes to pizza, okay? Wings, blue cheese. Pizza, ranch, okay? If you think otherwise, you're fucking crazy. But a way that I do that is that I will get um, a ranch packet. Usually I think it's like the Hidden Valley Ranch Packets. And then I will add that in mixed with the Greek yogurt. And if you add enough of that ranch, baby, that shit is bussin'. I use it on my salads too. It's just absolutely fucking phenomenal, bitch. I'm not even kidding with you. Those are definitely the ingredients that I use every single day. Um, it just helps me get in my calories while also having things that I really enjoy. But again, if you'd like more specific recipes, um, like what I eat in a day on a cut, I've done one of them before, but I can make more. Whatever it is that I can help you guys with, just let me know in the comments down below. But I think that that's everything that I've got to say. Honestly, like this video is almost an hour long and I'm going to have to cut it down clearly. So I'm hoping that I didn't blabble on too long. I hope that this was actually helpful for you. And if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. This was really fun to make and I hope that you can gain some type of value from it. But that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Other than that, I will see you guys in next Wednesday's video. Peace out. I'll smoke a fat one for you. <laughs>